Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Thought it was about time I did a bit of a home life and fashion catch up because there's lots that's been happening over the last couple of weeks. I've got some exciting news about our home renovation which I can't wait to tell you all about. I've got some beautiful new pieces in my wardrobe that I want to show you and also I went new normal shopping yesterday which was an experience to say the least. But first, let me start with the big renovations. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been getting builders in, getting different quotes, some of them a little bit eye-wateringly expensive and some a bit more reasonable. But I think we've finally found the one, well, I hope we have because he's starting on Monday. Literally the entire build is going to be done at the same time. Now, there are alarm bells ringing in my head here that some of you have said, take your time, do it slowly. And I know that's probably the best advice and there is an element of my impatience going on here. But my theory is, and slightly practical here of me, that if we do end up going into lockdown again for another three months, at least the entire house will be finished and it's a lot nicer environment to be stuck in. So the plan for the house, very simply, is to do something to every single room that we have, except for the attic actually we did get a quote on that it's insanely expensive we won't be doing it for a little while so the builders coming in on monday and literally going to start bashing down the two walls so the kitchen wall and the dining room wall to make one big open plan kitchen living dining area it's going to be very messy for a while and probably really noisy to try and film my videos so apologies in advance for that so first up i needed to get a kitchen which was a mission in itself obviously you've got all the big brands out there that you could go to but i quite liked the idea of supporting someone local independent small business so as you can see in this footage we're going floor to ceiling kitchen cupboards all across that back wall and then the island in the middle with a quartz top that's got the cooker and the sink We've actually gone for two dishwashers underneath the island, which I think was a very clever idea, which was David's annoyingly. Now it is a lot darker than I would normally go for. However, I think because it's one big giant open space, there's gonna be lots of light in there. We're gonna have some sort of light floor, which I'll get onto in a minute. I think it will really work. I think it's gonna look really modern, um, quite statement probably because it's quite an unusually dark color for a kitchen, but we're gonna lighten it with lots of different elements in there. So you've got your open plan kitchen flowing seamlessly into the dining room area. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go for this dining room table which came from made.com. I really like that concrete resin top. Now when it comes to chairs for the dining room table, we noticed that we really love this shade of wood against this gray which will be on all the walls. And I think bringing in those elements of natural wood will really soften the room as a whole. And then lots of plants as well. So I'm still looking for the perfect dining room chairs. If anyone knows of any, please do let me know. And likewise over the dining room table, I'm going to go for three pendant lights in a row. I think that will look quite nice. I really, really love the Tom Dixon ones. However, I will more than likely not have the budget for those, so I'll have to find an alternative. So onto sofas, and despite searching what feels like a million different versions of a corner sofa, and then thinking I'd found the perfect one. So on our little shopping trip yesterday, we thought, okay, we'll pop into the store, David can sit on it, check he likes it, and he sat down and went, don't like it, it's not very comfortable which just really deflated me, ruined all my plans and put me back to square one. So I had to find another option. So plan B on the sofa is actually going back to plan A, what I originally thought of reupholstering the sofa we've already got, which is the most sustainable option anyhow. So it's a good thing, but I think revamped in a beautiful brushed cotton or brushed linen, possibly wool. I think it would look beautiful. I'm going to move on now to some new pieces I've got in my wardrobe and also our shopping trip. But I'm going to tell you more about our home renovation and put it at the end of this video because I'm conscious that I'm ridiculously excited about it, but it doesn't mean that you will be. So if you are into interiors and home decor and excited to see what we're doing with the house, then there is more coming up at the end of this video. So next up, a few new pieces in my wardrobe that I really wanted to share with you. Um, so I'll start with the outfit that I wearing. So this is a pair of denim dungarees I've just got from Mango and it's part of their committed collection which I am so excited they have launched. This collection is made from either sustainable fabrics or eco-friendly practices 
So really, really nice to see that Mango have launched this and I will no doubt be buying lots from this collection. Now I know dungarees are often a Marmite piece. I absolutely love them. I've got friends who think they're horrible. But this pair particularly, I would say, I think they've got it spot on. And the reason being is because they've done a really low scoop across the sides here and then the racer back at the back. And that just enables you to have a little bit more shape here and not the long bun thing that dungarees often give you. I will add a link in the description box below if you do like this pair of dungarees. But one thing to note is I hate dungarees looking tight on me, so I always size up. So this is actually a medium, so I really wanted it very loose, very easy going, laid back kind of feel. Another new item for my beauty collection actually, Kiehl's very kindly sent me this little bottle of their new product, which is called the Vital Skin Strengthening Soup Serum. Well, that's tongue twister. So I've been using this for the last week and I would say I can definitely see a difference already. It feels like my skin is a bit plumper. My skin was looking grey almost. You know when it's just so dull, it just looks ugh. And it's boosted it and suddenly it feels like it's dewy and shiny and glowing again. Like you've got a bit of a tan and you suddenly feel like you've got a glow. That's how it's making my skin feel. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, especially if, like me, you were noticing your skin just feels a bit sallow and it needs a bit of a boost and you just want to refresh it. This seems to be making a huge difference, so really, really impressed with that. Next up, the very beautiful designer Tallulah and Hope very kindly asked if I would like to choose something from their new collection. Now I talk about them a lot in my videos, I love supporting them because they are a beautiful independent brand and in the end I chose this beautiful embroidered blouse. I have peaked already but I haven't actually tried it on yet so this will be the first time I try it on. How beautiful is that embroidery? Just stunning and this is often what you get from the independent designers something a little bit different something thinking outside of the box so it's quite an oversized shape you've got the seam detail just running across the chest here and then gentle gathers falling down i think it's absolutely beautiful really really high quality and i'm probably going to get lots of use out of that this spring summer Then my lovely friend Emma, who works with a brand called In Scripture, very kindly offered if I would like to choose a couple of bits of jewellery from their collection. Now I've mentioned them before because they do that beautiful inscribing on their jewellery where they can take a piece of handwriting and put that onto your jewellery. So with this necklace, for example, I've got my mum's own handwriting on the back with her name, Annie, and for obvious reasons that's really, really special. It's lovely to have around with me. And the other one I chose is this beautiful little one which is called the North Star necklace. So that one again has been made from 18 karat gold and then obviously you've got the star in the middle and then you've got a very tiny little pendant detail hanging down. So it's really simple and elegant, very subtle but just how I like it. So the new normal shopping is a little bit odd. Well very odd actually. It made me feel a bit weird if I'm honest. So it's the first day many shops in England were allowed to open again. And we'd got a bit of cabin fever, so we decided, okay, we've got all our masks, let's go have a look what it's like at Meadow Hall. Walk through the door, there's security guards everywhere being very pleasant, guiding you in the right direction, and essentially you have to follow the route. So a little bit like Ikea, exit through the gift shop, you have to follow one route on the left all the way around the shopping center, or when you're in a store. That's fine until you forget something that was just behind you, because you can't go back, you have to keep following the arrows, so you have to do a big old loot to get back to the item that you wanted to see. The one thing they haven't really figured out is with your family um, because they wouldn't let five of us go in at any one time which if I've got David with me is fine he can take the big boys I'll stay with Walter but if you're a single mom with three kids and you can't all walk in the door at the same time you can't leave little ones outside on their own. Now I was planning to do a bit of a shop with me and I was going to go to Zara see what was new in store see the best bits from the sales so I went to Zara I had all good intentions of showing you their new collection, got in there, 
felt really nervous and a bit uncomfortable and did one little circle of the store and came out. I didn't even try anything on. So I'm really sorry about that. I have no Zara try on clothes to show you because it was just such a weird experience. So then I popped to All Saints, which was better because it was virtually empty in there. I think I was the only customer in the store. So I felt a bit more comfortable. And I actually managed to try on the two leather jackets that I often recommend so I could show you what they look like on. So one is called the Balfern, which is the traditional biker jacket, which I really, really love. The leather felt beautiful, very, very soft and buttery, almost like a napper leather. So I thought you might like to see what that looked like on. And then as another option, I really like the, I think it's called the Estella leather jacket. And that's obviously got the padded seam detail down the arm, which I thought looked really, really cool actually. So at the moment they were both coming very much to my hip bone. She said, you can add another inch on once it's worn in a little bit. So if you are looking for a leather or biker jacket at the moment, I would definitely recommend either of those from All Saints. But in all honesty, I did find the whole shopping experience a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe as time goes on, it will settle down and they'll find um, gentler ways to introduce all the new rules. But for the time being, I think I'm just going to stick to online shopping from the comfort of my home. So back to the house renovation. Thank you so much for staying with me. It's nice to know that other people are really into interiors like I am. So the flooring I'm having a bit of a drama with. Um, so any advice, um, please do let me know if you've used any of these different types in your own house. So one option and the most expensive option is the polished concrete floor. Now it's not full polished concrete, it's called micro cement lots of research about it and essentially it just makes it a much cheaper option almost a third of the price of full polished concrete floors the downsides are it's still expensive so it's the most expensive floor out of the three I'm trying to choose from the other option to that is going for really big porcelain tiles um, and I found some from a company called porcelain superstore and these are 90 by 90 so really nice big tiles Obviously it's not gonna look like polished concrete floor, but it's gonna have a very similar effect. I do really like those, it's within budget, and I suppose the downside of those is without underfloor heating, could it feel quite cold underfoot? Then you've obviously got wood floors or wood engineered floors. I was thinking about that maybe in a chevron design. And then the other option, which the builder sort of threw in there was this LVT or luxury vinyl how is that me? <laughs> luxury vinyl, oh, luxury vinyl tiles, that's why. They are really, really cost effective and it's definitely the cheapest option for the entire floor of our downstairs of our house. I just don't know if it will look cheap and I don't normally like things that are pretending to be something else. So a, a vinyl that's pretending to be wood, does it, does it really work? So any advice on flooring, I would be very, very grateful for because I've got in a complete pickle with it and I don't know what to choose. Upstairs, we're doing a new family bathroom. The two boys have got en suites, so they're having new en suites. Everything's gonna be painted. This room, which is currently our bedroom, is gonna be chopped in two, because it's a little bit of a silly long room that you don't kind of need all that space. And one half will be for us, one half will be Walter's room. And then the new spare bedroom is going to be a bit of a playroom for him. So along with making two videos a week and homeschooling my children, I decided to paint Walter's room so I could get a good indication of what this colour would be like that I plan to use over the whole house. So I want it all one colour, which is by Farrenball Cornforth White. I really like the idea of it really flowing from room to room. So I've got my painting gear on, looking very chic, as you can see. Don't even look at those roots because they are proper lockdown roots that desperately, desperately need doing. But I wanted to give you an idea of what this paint colour looks like when I had done Walter's bedroom. So I really like that colour. I think it's going to look very soft and elegant around the entire house. And though I quite like painting, I find it quite therapeutic really, but um, the professionals will be doing the rest of the house. Did I forget anything? Oh, new patio doors going to the garden, a new patio out the back and possibly, if we can afford it, which I probably can't, uh, new windows at the front of the house as well, because I hate the brown color. I think it's really dark and dingy. That's the plan, in theory. <laughs> so that's it, I'm gonna stop waffling now, but hopefully you enjoyed this little catch up. And all the exciting plans for our home renovation, some beautiful new pieces in my wardrobe, and a very strange shopping experience. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you're not already subscribed, it would be really lovely if you could do so. And if you are already 
subscribed, thank you very much. It would be really helpful if you could press the little bell button too. I will be back on Sunday with a beautiful and very exciting haul video for you to enjoy. So hopefully I shall see you then. Take care.